Hello, everyone. I um, hope you're all doing well today. And oh, hello, VTF community. Thank you all for having me here. Uh, my name is Michael Haig. I um, help co-found create what we all use, which is Atomic Red Team. Um, and so today I'm really grateful that you're here and listening and here to check this out. Today we're going to be talking about becoming Atomic and how I found the Atomic way. Uh, so again, my name is Michael Haig. I am currently a principal threat researcher at Splunk. Uh, prior to that, I was at Red Canary, and then I worked for a large MSSP before that. My background does come from like an IT sysadmin, network engineer uh, background, which is kind of where I gained a lot of my experience and um, understanding networking and, and IT management and whatnot. Um, you may know me from other open source projects. We recently kicked out what we call living off the land drivers. We have another one called bootloaders. And then of course, Atomic Red Team, um, which is what we're all here for today. So really excited to share and dig into some more about Atomic, um, starting out with our quick agenda and <laughs> mostly focused on the Atomic Red Team history, where it came from, how it dawned, and you know a little bit about where it's at today. Uh, and then for the fun part, we're going to dive into sending some atomics downrange and showcase a little bit about, you know, using an atomic test um, and using invoke atomic red team, things like that. Cool. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, let's jump into the atomic red team history. Now, the genesis of atomic red team started out when I was at Red Canary. And at the time, uh, we were really small. We had about 12 people as a 12th employee, and I was helping out on the sales side along with like the detection engineering side. Um, but with the sales side, we would do these things called initial presentations, kind of like that first initial initial like sales prezzo to a prospect. And they would be the prospect would be excited about, hey, like I want to test Red Canary during my proof of concept. Um, I'm just going to download a bunch of ransomware or a bunch of malware off the internet and just run it on a virtual machine with your agent. Well, we not we were not really a a antivirus product, um, so your AV product would have picked all all those pieces. Uh, we were more on the behavior side, and something you would see, you know, an adversary perform running PowerShell encoded commands or, you know, using RedServe 32 and just different things like that. Um, we were not really focused on catching a binary uh, running on the box, which is something that antivirus should have captured. And so at the time, um, early, I think 2017, um, I started kind of capturing just a couple like one liners, just something simple that anybody could just kind of copy and paste, put it in their command prompt or PowerShell and just run it and see what happens, meaning see what happens as in. What is my AVC? What does my, you know, endpoint detection response product see? Network utilities, like did something download like Mimi Cats, um, any kind of behaviors like that. More focus on the EDR side, and then for us as Red, at Red Canary, we would be able to provide a um, an actual detection showing the customer or the prospect like this is where you know this is where you ran that PowerShell command. These are the processes that spawn. Here's the file modifications and, and so on. So kind of give them a, an end-to-end -end piece of what happened versus just you ran a bunch of malware. We may or may not have caught everything because, again, we're not antivirus. Um, and so the original blog here, it's at the, the link here at the bottom, is Atomic Red Team One Year Look Back. It's the old one. Um, a lot of the inspiration for Atomic came from a talk gave uh, gave by Chris Nickerson and Chris Gates called Adversary Modeling Exercise Simulation. And they talk a lot about uh, a lot of mapping and tracking adversary simulation in your organization, in your environment today. It's a great talk. It was from BrewCon, I think 2017 or 18. Um, so it's in there. It's it's a great talk. It's on the, on the blog. Um, and then the initial pitch for Atomic Red Team was actually... Uh, Charlie, and that's where the logo on the right comes from. It's Charlie the horse. If you remember the YouTube videos, <laughs> um, 
thankfully the name changed over time to what now what we now know as atomic red team um and so this slide shows really the kind of like the beginning of the of the tool here so on the left is exactly like i mentioned is as simple as just copy this put it in your camp command prompt do i detect it do i see the files download do i see the file modifications things like that it was meant to be as simple as that and and you can see our miter attack mapping was so generic and um, you know, there was no execution framework at the time. There was really no artifacts that we were providing or sharing. And these were just markdown files with text written on them. And so then fast forward, the one year blog does show all the base, all the original stuff, even the original videos where we published back in that time, 1718, um, kind of sharing some of the genesis of the product project and where it is, um, at that time. And what's neat is if you fast forward to today, we have a really awesome website for the tool uh, called atomicredteam.io. Uh, there is a search bar. You can go here and search. If you're looking for PowerShell or if you know the MITRE technique ID, you can just search by ID and that'll pop up for you. You can search for process names, things like that. I think even some of the command line items and that'll all show up on the search. Um, we also have a Slack group. So if you want to come and hang out and talk Atomic, join us on Slack. We have a newsletter. Um, there's a whole page where you can go and learn more about the maintainers and just the other different tools related to it, related to the whole Atomic kind of like universe. We have a lot of different things. Um, and so like today, we went from copy and paste, markdown files, one-liners, to using YAML files. Um, it was at RSA, Brian Beyer knocked out converting the entire project to using YAML. Um, and then as time went, we got what we use today, which is Invoke Atomic Red Team, which is the separate a separate repo to the project. But that's what we call our execution framework. It's a very simple way in PowerShell to run across Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, and so you're able to run this, choose your technique ID, and then kind of ship your test down range. There are different helpers in the project. So if you wanted to programmatically generate an atomic test. You can use what's called new atomic, and then you just tab complete that there. That's why there's an asterisk. Um, we also provide ways to run atomics remotely using PowerShell remoting. Um, there is a very simple atomic GUI. So if you want a way to visually create an atomic test, this GUI will help you with that. There is logging uh, built into Invoke, and everything we have is mapped back to MITRE ATT&CK. So you're able to, again, search by a technique ID, and then you'll see all the different tests that we have for it. Um, if there is not a test for it, there's your opportunity to contribute back to the project. Um, so if there's something that is new or we just don't have a test for, uh, you can you know, either Google around, find an adversary who performed that type of behavior. You can kind of repurpose it as an atomic test, uh, test it in your range, and then contribute back with a pull request. And yeah, so um, with all of that fun of where it started, mixed with where we're at today with Atomic, um, let's dive into a demo. Um, in our demo here today, going to kind of start first with just showing how to get started with Atomic Red Team, which if you're part of the Academy and part of you know BTF, you may already know how to use Invoke. Um, we're going to go from Invoke we're going to go to running a single test, the multiple tests. We're going to look at some YAML. Um, and then we're going to dig into an atomic test harness. So lots of data, lots of cool content. Let's go ahead and dive in here. All right. So first, we have our Invoke Atomic Red Team repo here. Um, and typically, where I start, um, you can scroll down, read some of the data here. Typically, where I start is in the wiki. Um, Carrie Roberts has spent a lot of time in making sure this is updated. She got the logo for us recently. It's really nice. <laughs> um, there are some short YouTube videos and like webcasts and whatnot that have been performed over time that Carrie has added in here. Um, so that's like the very quick page of the wiki. Now for me, since we're just getting started, I always click on installation. Um, if you already have Invoke installed, I always forget sometimes how to import the module manually. So quickly, I just click import, copy, paste, you know, import the 
invoke atomic test module again. But in this case, we want to reinstall it. You have a couple of methods. Uh, we do have this on the PowerShell gallery. So you can easily just run install module, invoke atomic. We do have one dependency, which is PowerShell YAML, and that'll pull down as well. The next one here is if you just want to run invoke expression, this will just grab the framework and install it. This will not install the atomics, which we definitely want the atomics. So down a little bit, you'll see install the framework and the atomics folder. Uh, if you're like me and you already have the folder installed, uh, you could just do tack force and this will download uh, everything again and force the reinstallation. And so bringing up my PowerShell prompt here, I'm just going to paste that in. I'm just going to run it. It's pretty quick. Um, it will download the full uh, zip of all the atomics. It extracts it. It puts it into C uh, atomics. So if you go back to here, C atomic red team, Everything will be in here um, once it unzips and finishes up. We'll have a C atomics, C atomic red team atomics folder, and then we can begin um, using invoke atomic test to flip through and find the atomic we would like to use. So that's that. So now it's in. First time on the prompt. Let's just make sure this works. You can just type invoke atom. You have two things in here now, atomic runner and atomic test. We're going to focus on atomic test today. And I just want to make sure it works, right? So I'm just going to run one real quick. Just hit this thing down range. Really neat little feature. We do have tab complete into this now. So if you're, you know, for forgetting which atomic it is that you're trying to run or like the sub uh, technique ID, you can just tab through and it'll just go through all of them uh, just for kicks. I'm just going to run this, just do a show details brief. And when you run a show details brief, it's just kind of high level. These are the different atomics that are inside that YAML that will run on Windows. If you were on Linux uh, and you ran a show details brief, it will show you atomics for Linux and same for Mac. If you're on Mac, it'll only show you the ones for Mac. But since we're on here, we get these guys today. OK, so first, let's flip back. Um, so we installed the framework. We checked out a couple quick commands. Um, let's go ahead and flip over to Atomic Red Team IO real fast since I talked about it. Um, again, you can come in here. You can search for your technique ID. You can click on Learn More. And this, again, covers all the different pieces. You know, We have a chain reactor, which is for Linux, Atomic Test Harnesses, which is more uh, focused on technique variations. We do have our attack coverage maps. So if you want to pull down the attack navigator files and whatnot, or look at the matrix on the site, we have those. Check out the maintainers and invoke atomic. Um, and so first, I'm going to highlight a atomic test that was recently contributed. Um, this is under T1564003, uh, which is hide artifacts, hidden window. I'm going to be looking at atomic test number two. Now, this was a recent one where an adversary was using uh, headless browsing. So running a browser in the headless via the command line, accessing a remote site called mockman.org. And so remember, these are YAML files on the back end, which we'll look at in a second, and we'll look at it in invoke. And these are the commands right here. And we also use what's called an input argument, so the input argument is bin ID. We'll map to here. So this is the actual bin ID. It's like a GUID. We would copy that, or with invoke, it'll add that there. And then same with browser. So if you're using Chrome, it will append that here. Um, and it will just start your browser in headless, access the mock bin site, um, perform whatever it needs to perform. So that's more from like the GUI side or from the atomic site. Let's go ahead and flip back to the command line here. If you're following along at home, it's 1564003. And if you just hit enter here, it will run every test in that YAML. Um, so what I always recommend is just doing a show details brief to get the high level what's inside this YAML. And the second thing I do is because we talked about running test number two, We'll run show details real quick. Show details will expand each one of the tests for us out on our prompt here. Um, two things it does. 
you'll see the red, which is basically what we saw on Atomic Red Team IO, which is the parameter, the input argument. And then it also will fill in the inputs. So if you wanted to run this manually, copy, paste, it'll spawn whatever you want it to spawn. Same with what we were talking about with our headless browsing here. Copy, paste the, in what the one with the inputs, run it, you ran your test. Uh, but in this particular case, we want to use invoke. So now I want to focus this in on doing another tack test numbers and then type test number two. And then now we only see just that test number two here um, and everything's filled in. So after you're well aware of what you want to do or what you've seen for this test, you just back out of that show detail um, and you want to run test number two. Well, one last thing I'll share is if you want to change any of these input arguments, you can do it on the fly. So for instance, this bin ID is a bin ID that somebody contributed to Atomic Red Team. We don't know where it goes. We don't know where it does, um, things like that. And also I'm not using Chrome, I'm using Firefox. And so the input argument allows me to change these on the fly. So what I can do now is I can just do a tack prompt for input args hit enter. It's now going to say, what would you like your bin ID to be today? Uh, well, I'm going to trust it this time. I don't know where it goes or what it does, but we'll let it be. And now it says, what browser do you want to use? And so in this case, I have Firefox. Let's go with that. And that's it. It will now run that test, um, kick it off in the background. And so in this particular case, it's like, hey, it's already running. <laughs> um, it wants me to close it, which I'm not going to right now but it would have kicked off that same command line. So if you're looking for what we call that telemetry trace, uh, that command line will have occurred. So if you're going to your SIM or you're looking in Sysmon data or anything like that, you'll see that, that trace data already there, um, whether Firefox is open or not. And I think for fun, I already have MS Edge in here as well. So if you kick that off, it'll run that. Same thing with MS Edge in the background. Um, hitting that mock bin site. Uh, or if you have everything as the test prescribed, you could just kick it off and it will go and use it. But again, I don't have Chrome on my box, so no dice for me today. So yeah, that's our first test. That's 1564.003, where it will start a headless browser session, accessing a mock bin, bin ID on the internet. Um, performing whatever that may or may not perform. Uh, it's actually benign. It just forwards you to Google. So if you were just kicking it off like me, it's not too big of a deal. Um, last one I'll show is you see on Atomic Red Team IO, there is what's called a cleanup command. So what you could do is do attack cleanup. Some tests will leave artifacts on disk, like say it downloads Mimi Cats or downloads some <clears throat> third party thing. Um, you may not always want to leave it there in your test environment. So what you could do is just do attack cleanup. In this case, it would attempt to kill the Chrome process. So nothing too crazy. All right. Um, so we looked at an atomic red team IO command line. This is the YAML file. So it's everything you would see on the atomic red team Git page. Uh, just obviously built in YAML here. And so same concept. All the input arguments would be here. So you can change this. So say you're like, I never use Chrome in my environment. Uh, you could just change this to Firefox, save it. So anytime you run it now in the command line, it will always use Firefox for that input argument. Uh, if you wanted to change the bin ID, the default one, you could change that here too and just save and repurpose it however you like. So yeah, pretty neat. Um, when you're creating a new Atomic, Typically what I do is I'll take one that has very similar uh, pieces that I want to borrow. So whether it has input arguments, if, if I need an input argument, I'll borrow one that has them ready to go, um, you know, and just change the name, change the argument names, and then just add in my new command line, things like that. It's pretty easy to make a new atomic. Um, and you just save it, test it, and then just kind of iterate over any errors and fix anything as you need to fix. So it's pretty simple. All right, so let's head to our next atomic test. So with Invoke Atomic, 
we have the ability to run more than one of these um, test, test IDs or these test numbers at once. And I thought a really cool way to showcase that would be with the one of the original atomic tests that we have, which is RegServe32. And Casey Smith wrote these, wrote this particular tradecraft years ago. Um, oh man, I feel like it's 2015, 2016 time range, but this was the squibbly do uh, that was real popular for a long time. Um, it was bypassing things and whatnot, but basically kind of like the gist of it is it will use what we all see here at the end, which is this DLL, scrobj.dll. It will load what's called a SCT file and inside the SCT is something else. Um, and so we can go to Atomic, if I had the page open. <laughs> let's go ahead and head to it real quick. And let's go there, back to that YAML. And so this is RegServ32. And we always try to provide the source for everything we produce or share back into the project. Um, and so in this case, here's that SCT file that would be downloaded. You're able to come here and see exactly what it is. Um, you can modify it just as much. Um, and sort of the, the short version of this test is that when it runs, it will use JScript to load calc.exe. Um, and there's a lot of artifacts in this test and it's meant to showcase different pieces, right? Command line, mod module loads, network connections, um, anything like that. And so a lot of folks back in the day when we were writing content for this, it was, you know, look for RegServ32, look for the U and the I or the, or the SUI or look for HTTP in the command line, um, is it always scrobj.dll? It could actually just be scrobj, things like that. You could look for different artifacts. Um, and a process loading this DLL is highly suspect. So like, why is, why is this DLL being loaded by say um, DLL host or some other process, right? So this test allows us to play with it and check it out. So let's go ahead and just run it. Um, we talked about running two tests this time. So we're going to run the atomic test number one uh, for RegServe32, Scrob J. And then we'll also run test number two, which is, uh, again, just a little bit of a variation of the other one. So let's go ahead and flip back to our command line. Clear our window so it's a little bit cleaner. We're going to do invoke atomic test. And like I mentioned, we'll all, I typically like to always show the um, details brief, just to make sure things are actually here today. And in this case, I'm only doing it for test numbers one and two. Let me see what these look like expanded. And so now I can see here, um, there are instances where there might be what we call a prerequisite. And so we can actually run get prereqs to download any artifact that might be needed to run this test. So that's another switch that is offered in here. So with that, what I will do, just seeing that, is I will go ahead and run get prereqs, and it will go and attempt to download anything that's needed for this test to run successfully. Um, if I remember correctly, this typically happens, or what will happen is if the when you download the whole repo, um, if it doesn't have the SCT file, this will now go and grab the SCT file. So now that we know we have it for sure, we can just do one comma two. I'm just gonna run these all at once just so I have both of them done. Um, and so of course, calc spawn exactly as we expected. One of them may or may not work, but that's okay. Uh, that actually is a good time to offer up. Uh, when you do contribute to Atomic Red Team, you and your first time contributor, you will receive a t-shirt and a sticker. Um, so in particular, if that test appears to be broken, uh, try it out in your range and submit a PR to get it fixed and you will get a shirt and sticker out of the deal. All right. So that is running T1210, uh, T1218.01010 um, for RegServe32. So now I'm going to flip gears a little bit and we're going to go ahead and dive into uh, what's called atomic test harnesses. Um, this project is really, really cool in a way that 
it goes a little bit beyond just saying, looking for, say, RegServe32, loading something with ScrubJ. This will say, atomic test harnesses are meant to dive into all the variations, say, of using SCROB32. Now, it's, it's very deep on some of these tests. They may not be something you run every day or every week, say in your organization, um, but the idea is to determine if with like an EDR or whatnot, if you can detect the many, many different variations, um, say in particular, MS build can be used or is used and abused by adversaries. Now there are some test harnesses in here that pretty much capture every variation that say an MSHTA uh, can be abused. Or it may be missing one or two based on whether they work or don't work in the wild. So they were just weren't added uh, or compiled HTML files. We see that still to this day, adversary is using CHM files for delivery. And so if I wanted to test myself, whether, you know, say our spam mail gateways were working or EDRs were working, AV, things like that, I could use the test harness um, to go through and test all the variations for a CHM delivery. Um, but for this particular test, I'm going to use the out PowerShell command line parameter. And this is under T1059001 for PowerShell. The idea is that this will generate many, many, many different variations of PowerShell, like encoded command, command. Um, it also dives into different types of like switch types. So like everybody typically uses hyphen, but you can use what's called an N dash or an M dash or hey, a horizontal bar, maybe a forward slash, just different ways to run this. And it allows us to test whether our EDR or, or telemet telemetry collection tool is actually collecting all these different variations. Um, I've found in the wild that it is one great way to showcase whether this data is properly being collected. Um, and, I, and you'll see, even just based on that switch type, if you switch it to horizontal bar and you wrote an analytic that only looks for hyphen, potentially all these things, this particular thing, the switch type will evade that analytic looking just for hyphen. So it's something to be aware of. Um, it's something to test and just see those variations like, you know, hyphen was was yesterday's, but now they're using this new switch type, M dash, N dash, things like that. Um, and so the code is very detailed. Matt has worked so hard at making these, these technique variations for atomic test harnesses extremely detailed. There's many different ones over here. You might be eyeballing them. Dump LSAS, process injection, things like that. They are really, really powerful. Uh, tools in your arsenal when you're learning about even just PowerShell. Like, wow, who knew that N dash and M dash could be used? Quick tip, N dash and M dash can be used for many different native uh, binaries within Windows. Think RegServe32 or RunDLL32, things like that. You can repurpose these for other process uh, execution as well. So there might be a really cool point here to create a variation on another atomic test using say an N dash and just see what happens. Um, so for atomic test harnesses, if you, if you haven't used it, again, check out the wiki. Um, we have all the getting started guides here. For Windows in particular, it's pretty simple. Um, you just run install module atomic test harnesses. Again, this is loaded up on the PowerShell gallery for quick installs. Uh, there are other ways to install it. You can obviously download the repo, install it manually. Um, you can you know, do whatever you need from there. Um, in this particular case, Matt provides extreme detail. So I'm just going to run this one just so we can see all the different tools uh, loaded up. And you can see here, similar to what we saw on the site, we now see here locally. And so now let's check out the out PowerShell one. Um, I wrote this apparently two years ago, this gist. Um, and you can more or less what I wanted to do was just say, generate all the variations for hyphen or forward slash n dash, things like that. Um, and let's go ahead and just pop one of these in. It will also execute it. You can also just generate them if you just want them generated. 
So I'll just copy, paste, and I'll tab through these here in a second, but kind of gives you a quick idea of how this looks, how it runs. Um, and it went through all of them, right? You can see encoded co all the way up to just E and C, E, N, E. Um, so this is using, again, the horizontal bar um, on the command line. It looks funny, but these all did execute. Um, you can see the process ID, everything like that. Each one of the atomic test harnesses has an output that looks just like this so that you get a really good idea of what to look for, say in like Sysmon or anything like that. If you wanted to just run this and you wanted to see what they look like, kind of like all bunched up, you just back out that execute um, and you can easily just kind of go and grab one of these or all of these. Um, or with PowerShell natively, you can tap complete through those switch types and just say, hey, give me the hyphens. You just want to see hyphen, things like that. Um, there is a way in here where you can pass your own um, script that you want to run. Uh, these all decode to like a simple thing that I believe just has the GUID inside of it. Um, and so you can also, as I showed in the Atomic Test Harnesses repo, you could easily uh, run get help on this and do full, and it'll output everything you need. There are some great examples in here. So if you wanted to just copy paste some of the examples, ship them down range, see what happens. Um, that's all here too. Ah, uh, yeah, right here. So you can add your own script block and uh, just run that as well. So again, it's simple as this, play with the variation, see what happens. Um, and that's using the horizontal bar. Yeah. Um, if you're like me and you wanna just run all of these at once, typically what I do is just kind of create something uh, like this in a simple list. And I'll go in and just say, okay, gonna ship all these down range and just let it go, um, mostly as a way to just kind of collect all this data at once. I don't have to go back and run them one by one. Um, and it just keeps going, right? Because we told it to like run this too many times. So I'll kill that, let that stop for now. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it's kind of the beginning and the ending, uh, say our time here with the, um, at least using atomic test harnesses, um, give it, a quick purview. It's worth the time to dig into different variations and or, you know, understanding how, you know, you could abuse and use different things in different ways. Um, CHM is awesome. The MSHTA one is great as well. So, yes. So that concludes our, our demo time. Um, you know, we dug into a new atomic T. 1564003 focused on using Mockbin and headless browsers. We also switched over to looking at RedServ32, uh, SCROB or Squibbly Do, uh, T1218010. And then we finished up over here looking at atomic test harnesses, T1059001. And that would be our PowerShell. All right. So we'll go ahead and bring the slides back up here. And Yes, <laughs> got the quick one here. So screenshot this, um, use your OCR reader if you like and grab that gist link. Um, but more or less, you can find this, it's all public and whatnot. So ah, I messed up that T101564, but it's 1564003, uh, test number two. You can copy and paste these, you can run it, simple as that. Um, and we also dove, dove into some of the basics of Invoke Atomic as well. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you learned something new or you at least learned how to get started with Atomic, um, you know, playing with Atomics and whatnot. Atomic Red Team is free and open source software. You can contribute to it. Again, if you contribute even a simple fix or a new Atomic, you do get a free shirt, get a free sticker. Uh, they'll mail it directly to you. So definitely look to contribute. Um, check out some of the latest Atomics. There's new PRs being opened all the time. The project's growing daily. Sign in and check out the Atomic Slack, ask questions. Everybody there is willing to help. Test yourself, test your analytics, play with the variations, play with the simple Atomics, see what happens, um, see what things are collected or not collected sometimes. So yeah, thank you again, really appreciate it. And thank you so much, DTF, for having me.